With the recent news involving Disney's potential development of a third installment in the Tron franchise, many fans are curious to see which characters and storylines will be presented in this film. Perhaps the most interesting character to come from 2010's Tron Legacy was Korra, the last of the beings known as isomorphic algorithms. In this video, I'd like to cover the known lore surrounding the ISOs and how I think they could fit into a potential third installment. A year after the events of Tron, the first of the isomorphic algorithms, or ISOs, were discovered at the edge of Tron City by Clue and Kevin Flynn. While the other programs were created by users, the ISOs were a race of programs that spontaneously manifested on the grid. At a code base level, they were much different from the other programs known as BASICs, which all had predefined functions and directives and operated within a highly regulated class system determined by a priority ranking. Because of this, BASIC programs were not very adaptable or able to change or grow quickly beyond the limitations that were set by their user-issued functions. In contrast, these ISOs had evolved, possessing a greater form of free will with a kind of digital DNA that even Kevin Flynn struggled to understand. This inner structure of their code would potentially have allowed the ISOs to develop beyond the capabilities of BASICs. They could not be programmed or controlled and required no purpose or function in their systems. Flynn remarked that they were profoundly naive, yet unimaginably wise. The ISOs had a glowing symbol on their arm that represented their gender, with females bearing a hexagon followed by a T-shape, and males bearing a hexagon with a sideways V-shape. After their initial discovery, the ISO population grew and began to integrate with the population of the grid. This integration was met with resistance from the basic programs, forcing the ISOs to form their own tower-based colonies. The Bostromites, which were a faction of disenfranchised ISOs, sought asylum from the xenophobic abuse they suffered at the hands of BASICs. Desiring freedom from the influence or interference of BASICs, the majority of their faction relocated from the city core to the Outlands. In order to better survive the harsh environment of the Outlands, the Bostromites made aggressive self-modifications. The color circuitry of the ISOs was usually white, However, the Bostromites had modified their circuitry to glow bright green. This served to further distinguish them from other programs. The manifestation of the ISOs was considered by Flynn to be a miracle. However, to Clue, these beings represented an element of chaos, an imperfection that stood as a threat, and an obstacle to his prime directive of creating the perfect system. As such, he resolved to eliminate the obstacle by eradicating these beings. However, Clue realized that his position on the ISOs would contrast with Flynn's, so he waited until the time was right, all the meanwhile gathering enough power to launch a coup that would enable him to remove this perceived blight and restore perfection to the system. It wasn't until 1989 that Clue launched his attack, and with the aid of his Blackguard forces, he was able to defeat Flynn and Tron. After Flynn was forced into hiding, in an event known as the Purge, Clue and his forces destroyed the ISO's dwellings and swept through the grid, hunting down and eliminating every ISO they could find. Ultimately, these miraculous beings were either destroyed by Clue and his forces, or infected by the Abraxas virus during the Purge. Abraxas was formerly an ISO named Jalen, who had been given an upgraded disc which had been modified by Clue to contain a malicious subroutine. When this disc was activated, it erased his memory and turned him into the monstrous virus that would go on to infect and destroy other ISOs and basics. This resulted in them being irreversibly transformed into minions under the virus's influence. Abraxas was eventually defeated in the storyline of Tron Evolution, but between his and Clue's efforts, the population of ISOs had been mostly eradicated. By the time of the events surrounding Tron Legacy, Korra is the last known ISO alive. After the Purge, she was unsuccessful in her attempt to kill Clue and was forced to flee in a Recognizer ship, which crashed, leaving her stranded in the Outlands. With her energy depleted, her systems began shutting down, but at the last moment, she was saved by Flynn. In the 2010 film, it was revealed that the root code of the ISOs presented groundbreaking possibilities for mankind, 
opening up the path to eradicating disease, enabling mankind to make giant leaps in the fields of science and philosophy. As Flynn so eloquently put it, bio-digital jazz, man. At the end of Tron Legacy, Korra managed to leave the digital world with Sam, and they are last seen riding off in the warmth of a beautiful sunrise. Not much is known regarding the third Tron film at this point, however Jared Leto has been confirmed to have a role, and the titles Tron Ares and Tron Ascension have been attached to the project. Some have been of the opinion that Leto could assume the role of a new antagonist, perhaps with the name Ares in this upcoming film. Ares, after all, in Greek mythology was the god of war, so it would be fitting for a character of that name to be a villain. As far as what we can expect to see from Korra in a third installment, the actress Olivia Wilde has not been confirmed or even rumored to be involved in the project at this point. However, if you'll indulge me in a bit of wild speculation, I'd like to discuss a few ideas involving the ISOs that I think would be very exciting to see play out. First of all, I would be interested to see how the information found in Korra's DNA could have helped mankind in the years since her arrival to the physical world. While it would be hard to believe that she could solve all of mankind's problems, I could envision that many advancements could be made in medicines to eradicate diseases and to extend and improve the quality of human life. While all of the known ISOs aside from Korra are thought to have been wiped out, it is very possible that in a similar system, these algorithms could manifest once again, though with Flynn's comments about the remarkable and even miraculous way in which they came into being, it wouldn't seem likely that the grid would once again spawn the same kind of life forms. The ISOs possessed a remarkable ability to quickly recognize patterns and build knowledge despite not having any pre-programmed directives. This may have contributed to Flynn's perception of them as being unimaginably wise. I think it would be intriguing to see how an ISO, given their ability to quickly evolve and adapt, could be used as an antagonist in the third Tron film. While it can be said that in the video game Tron Evolution, an ISO was already used as a villain, most of what made him an ISO had been stripped away, reprogrammed, and transformed. Given the easter eggs in Tron Legacy that hinted toward the return of Edward Dillinger Jr., or possibly even the MCP, I wouldn't be surprised if we were to discover that Leto's character was an ISO that used his free will to align with Dillinger's selfish ideologies, or to mimic the ruthless determination of the Master Control Program. Or if we happen to see the return of the MCP as the main villain of this third film, as I've previously speculated about in my MCP lore video, then I think it would be fascinating to have a twisted ISO, perhaps played by Leto, to take on a role similar to Sark in the original film, serving as the commander of the MCP's military forces. However, because of the ISO's greater capacity to act out of free will and their resistance to control, if Leto's character were to start out as an antagonist, I think it would be entertaining to see a redemption story arc unfold one in which we could watch his character turn into an anti-hero of sorts and play a pivotal part in the downfall of whatever evil Dillinger has concocted, whether that be a new MCP or some other foe. Once again, this is all wild speculation, but it's fun to think about all the endless possibilities that are available and all the captivating stories that could be told in our next trip to the grid. But let me know your thoughts and theories about the ISOs and their possible involvement in the plot of a third Tron film. Would you like to see these miraculous beings return, or would you rather see new life forms and technologies created in the digital world? Be sure to let me know in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe for more Tron and other sci-fi and fantasy content. Thank you all so much for your support, and as always, have a very nerdy day.